So, <clears throat> today's seminar is on literary text, art, and installation, body, space, and temporal reality. The brochure says, the brochure for the seminar says, literary texts are not merely words alone, but each text should be transcreated through images, objects, and body installation. Excellent thought. But as a writer, I have a completely different view. As a writer, I don't want my text to be tampered with. The dictatorship of the text, at least while I am alive, should be maintained. So this is not a view of, a, this is not my minority view, this is a view of a majority of writers in Europe or in USA. For example, in France, when you publish a novel or a collection of poems or stories, the cover, the cover is usually a blank paper. So they don't want to interpret a parallel text of their body of work even on the cover. So this is a problem. The basic problem with the interpretation is that's not the way the writer sees it because he doesn't want his work to be tampered with, to be reinterpreted. There believes, firmly believes, the complete lack of autonomy of the text. But that is a complete foolish view also, because that's inescapable. <laughs> because the reader's freedom, the writer can't dictate. So, there are problems. What are you reading? Are you reading my story? Or are you reading the subtext? Or are you seeing with the illustrations of another artist? I don't like illustrations also. No decent English or French or Dutch magazine carry, whenever they carry a serialized a novel or a short story, publishes an illustration. It's an Indian tradition. They do it in Hindi. They do it in Bengali, they do it very well in Malayalam. So, uh, should there be pilot text? Should the writer be the ultimate master of his text? This is a question that has been going on for last uh, 2,500 years. The word, the Hermeneutics is as old as Plato. Plato wrote the first essay on it. Then Aristotle uh, elaborated it. So the first, hermeneutics means it's from the Greek word hermeneu, means to tell, to utter, to spell out. Thereby, the moment you spell out, the moment you describe a flower, the moment you describe a sky, the sky, the flower, the literary work, the poem, loses its charm. So in 1966, there was a whole huge wave of academic onslaught on semiology, all kinds of interpretational attack on the literary text. So in 1966, Susan Sondag wrote the seminal book against interpretation. The book itself is called Against Interpretation. So what is Sundang's view? Sundang's view is that spare me of the hermeneutics of literature. 
give me the erotics back. Give me the erotics of literature back. Give me the soul of the text back. Don't go on split hairs about the literature. So to that extent, I am on a minority view here. Uh, always, I don't allow my, I generally don't allow my stories to be made into drama plays. The utter nonsense, you know, some of them have been made into plays, which are completely off the mark. And into film, because the text, the text is to be enjoyed. You don't describe your relationship, your love for another person, your love for your child. You don't go on psychoanalyzing it or go on taking its connection to the deep connection, the mother's influence. You just love a person. You just read a book. You just see a literary work, a painting. Why do you have to interpret? The entire abstract art needs is based on the premise that it's beyond interpretation. You can't interpret Picasso. What does Picasso mean? You can't interpret uh, Braque. You can't interpret any of the great artists. So the, from the figurative art to the abstract art was the escape of the artist from the ruthless, mindless interpretation. So that is also applicable in uh, literature. The literature became more and more obtuse. You, can you interpret Finnegan's way? James Joyce's novel Finnegan's way. Can anybody dare to interpret it? Because you want to put behind the critics. I'm sorry to say the academics and the students beyond the pale of this text. So after so a text will have to be seen as a source of energy, as a source of beauty, as a source of inspiration, rather than interpreting it. Actually, again Susan Sondag said, interpretation is the intellectual's revenge on art. It's between the mind and the, the head thing. Art is mind. And uh, interpretation is head. So, studio, how are you going to interpret Messi's play or Ronald's those play or Google's uh, Paul Ward? How are you going to do it? So, the same piety, the same forgiveness should be accorded to literature. So, this is a uh, all very well. Now we are coming to the other part. What is your art? Let's say Shakespeare. What is Shakespeare's art? Shakespeare is dead and gone. The text itself has become an autonomous object. So when Macbeth comes into the hands of Akira Kurosawa, he sees it in a different light. It's an equally relevant light. In Akira Kurosawa's crown of thorns, he did only one thing. He made Lady Macbeth pregnant. So once the Lady Macbeth is pregnant, the entire meaning of her ambition, her, her drivenness, her, her maliciousness, bordering on insanity, all got meaning. Why is it? Just by putting a pillow under the tummy pillow over the tummy of the actress and raping her, she shown as pregnant and the entire story of Macbeth got a different meaning. So, the text is not the writer's own. And this is a completely contradictory view from what I have been Telling her. The text is not the writer's own, it got its own autonomous, and in the hands of another creative person, it becomes a greater art. 
you know, in the month of October, in the city of Edinburgh, Edinburgh is in Scotland, they have this great festival called the Edinburgh Festival. Each year, there is at least, there is a whole fringe of Edinburgh Fringe Festival, you know, on the, on the roadsides and the cafes. They, there is at least 20 to 25 new interpretations of Shakespeare. Last year there was about five hamlets, black hamlet, gay hamlet, and uh, about six or seven Othellos. So the text becomes inspiration for another person. Then that becomes liable for interpretation. So it's like a parallel mirror. You, you write, somebody interprets, somebody interprets the, someone else. So entire parallel set of meanings probably in the end constitute the text. So one of the famous writers or thinkers on this subject of hermeneutics has said that each person, each reader, each viewer is an island of awareness because everybody sees the text as different. So with these words, these great efforts of this lovely border village, an extremely happy experience of how a set of very enthusiastic students and equally enthusiastic teachers have put together one of the greatest riddles of modern times, how the text should be looked at. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your words of wisdom.